Hi, my name is Wayne. I'm a sophomore here at Duke. I study chemistry and neuroscience. And in my free time, I play rugby with the Duke Rugby Club and I volunteer at the Duke Hospital. So usually I'm up at around uh, 9 o'clock. I would have breakfast at West Union right there. Classes start at 9.30. I would be in class all the way until about 11, 12. I catch lunch with my friends uh, on the Bryan Center, on the plaza. After that, we'd have um, my labs, which run from about 1.15 to about 4 o'clock. After which, I get a bit of a break before rugby starts at 6.30, all the way till 8.30, and then I'm pretty much done for the day. So dinner and then just working for the rest of the evening. So we're in front of French Sciences. Uh, this building was donated by Melinda Gates a while ago and it's our, it serves as our chemistry building as well as all our teaching laboratories. Uh, so I have class here twice a week uh, doing my chemistry labs as well as my lectures. I'm planning on majoring in neuroscience. Obviously, uh, that's not confirmed yet, so you have until your second year to uh, declare your major. So I'm very close to declaring my major, but not quite yet. Why I chose neuroscience, uh, it was mainly because of my research off the side. So I work in a Duke OBGYN lab with the School of Medicine where we do a lot of neurobehavioral research in uh, offsprings and uh, measure environmental toxicology. So that coincides very closely with the neuroscience major here at Duke. So I was able to get two additional credits for my independent research, which counted towards the neuroscience major. So for the neuroscience major, the neuroscience major is interesting because it has co-requisites as well as uh, the major requirements. So. A lot of the co-requisites would be basic science, maths, computer science. Uh, I think there needs to be a statistics course and a psychology course. And then you would take the gateway neuroscience course, neuroscience 101 or 102, and then moving that onto cognitive neurobiology, which is what I'm in right now, and then cognitive neuroscience, moving on to the 300 level classes, which uh, you have a little bit more flexibility in. You have to do two research requirements uh, in order to graduate with distinction if you want, or one a semester of research if you just want to graduate with a normal major. My favorite class so far has actually been, uh, not neuroscience, it's actually been ethics. It's been um, a class that I took freshman year, first semester, called uh, Global Citizenship, where we examined um, corporations and that corporate tactics in the economy and how tactics that corporations use to control the masses and control the crowd. I mean, the academic culture here is definitely work hard, play hard. Um, you know, everyone is very studious when they need to be. Uh, that doesn't mean they are all the time. You know, we have, fun, we have our fun as well. But I'd say everyone's super helpful. I've never really run into an instance where I've needed help and there's no one to help me. Usually people do reach out and um, it's very easy to, you know, tap someone on the shoulder and be like, hey, can we study together? Like, or can you explain this? I don't quite understand it. And 95% of the time, everyone's very happy to help. So we're at uh, BC Plaza, so Bryan Center Plaza, sort of the main central part of campus where everyone walks through uh, to and from class. So everyone's at class right now, hence why it's uh, pretty empty. But um, as soon as 12 o'clock hits and the sun's out, um, this place will be you know, fully packed, packed to the brim. Social life here is, um, is, is varied. So there is Greek life, Greek life does exist, um, and they're quite active if you choose to get into that. And um, that usually happens Wednesday onwards, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, with a bit of a rest on Saturday, actually, which is interesting. There are clubs and bars that people go out to in central Durham, so that's only about 10, 15 minutes away, so it's very convenient. There's also things like, um, there's this Eno State Park, which we go to a lot during the, during the weekends, during the day, uh, where you can sort of go swimming and stuff like that. In terms of local activities, there is the Durham, Bull, um, Durham Ballpark, where we can go watch uh, baseball, and obviously a lot of on-campus sports, such as the basketball here, uh, attracts a lot of attention as well. I mean, my favorite memory here has honestly been um, whenever we play UNC. So, Whenever Duke plays UNC at basketball, the entire school 
gets into the spirit and gets into the mood at like 7 a.m. in the morning. Everyone's dressed, everyone's painted, and obviously there's no class. So uh, festivities and activities begin at around 9 a.m. in the morning. And Duke is fully on board with it. Duke fully supports us for doing that. So you'll just see crazy people dressed dressed like maniacs running around the canvas all day, uh, even though the game's not until like 7 p.m. Uh, we'll be running around doing things all day, all morning, all afternoon, watch the game together as a crowd, um, usually outside. For those who are tenting, they'll get to go inside Cameron, so that's a completely different atmosphere. But the rest of us will watch outside, right outside Cameron. And when we win, it's massive celebrations as well. So that's one of the best nights I've had here. Um, there's a bunch of freshmen just walking off the bus right now behind me. So freshmen here live on a different campus called East Campus. So it's about uh, two and a half, three miles away from here and they get bused here every single day. The bus runs every 10 minutes and it's about a 10, 15 minute ride depending on how busy it is. Um, it usually gets pretty busy during uh, class time. So 10, 15 is a big one, 12 is a big one. So definitely want to get there before the rush. But it's actually really nice because you live on a campus solely with freshmen and you get to sort of experience that. And everywhere around you, everyone around you is in your same position and you know your age doing the same things and just as lost as you are. So I applied uh, to five universities in the US. Uh, I'm originally from the UK, so I had my uh, reach and safety schools in the UK all figured out. So the US was really a long shot for me, and um, Duke was one of the five, and um, actually turned out to be the only one that took me from the US, so uh, here I am. Um, I honestly haven't heard much about it, Duke, uh, before coming over, which is why I'm very happy to be doing this and to be giving everyone a bit more information about the university. I heard it was very strong in terms of bioengineering. Uh, I was doing a research paper in high school where basically all the uh, research that was coming out, that I was reading, was coming out of Duke University bioengineering. So I was like, this must be interesting. And so I shot the professor, talked to him for a little bit, and he seemed really interesting. And sort of he was the main indication that Duke was a you know academically strong school. And um, I was on a virtual tour here uh, during COVID, sort of online, and the campus was beautiful. So I sort of thought, why not? I'll give it a shot. The best thing about Duke, I think it's the people. Uh, everyone here, absolutely everyone, is incredibly interesting. They have an incredibly interesting backstory, and they're also incredible at something. Usually it's something completely unexpected. Usually um, half the guys here will have a startup that they're just running on the side. Even though they're an English major, uh, they might be running a tech startup. You know, half of them will be like, I, yeah, I, I'm like national team climbing, which is incredible. And um, so you meet super interesting people every single day, wherever you go. And I think that's the biggest thing. That's what makes Duke Duke. I would say to students starting your applications, uh, be your genuine self um, and, you know, write about something you're passionate about. You know, I wrote about um, a small business that I started uh, back in 2018. And it wasn't, it wasn't anything special, you know, but it, it, was, it meant a lot to me. And um, I think that sort of came through in my writing. So, so for the guys applying overseas, um, definitely get to know your admissioner, uh, your local area admissioner very well. Um, he or she can be a huge help and a great source of information, really. Um, I was lucky enough to um, have met my admissioner through a fair um, that was held in London. And then she actually came to my school uh, for another admissions meeting. So she sort of remembered me and we had dinner afterwards. So definitely get to know them really well. They can be, they're your biggest ally and they're only there to help. I chose to work with Crimson honestly because they offered me a free sort of consulting session so where we just talked and they were genuinely helpful. So in that one session, um, I sort of got a lot of insight into applying to the US. Uh, obviously from the UK, my school didn't really have that much um, advising uh, for the US and I was kind of oblivious of the process. And so with Crimson hammering out every single detail for me, forcing me to stay ahead of timeline, and um, letting me know of every single nuance in the application, that was sort of hugely beneficial for me. My advice to students doing their applications right now would be um, get ahead and be diligent about your essays. 
don't let uh, your academics affect your application and vice versa, don't let your application affect your academics. So I would definitely recommend um, doing your application in your free time, whenever you have time, you know, and attacking it by piece, uh, piecewise, so a little bit at a time and just staying ahead of the deadlines. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you want to start your own Crimson journey, please contact one of their advisors today. Thank you.